Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be going over some laboratory safety elements for engineering students. Now, before we get started, I want to uh, include a disclaimer here. This video is not meant to be an all-inclusive laboratory safety video. This is just meant to give you an overview of some safety elements that you need to be aware of in an engineering laboratory setting. For any specific safety uh, protocols, procedures, or concerns related to your specific laboratory setting, project, or whatever you're working on at your school or university, you need to talk to your professor, instructor, safety officer, or laboratory technician to get those specific details. Again, this is just meant to be an overview of some safety elements to be aware of for engineering students. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, engineering students typically find themselves in three laboratory settings in their college careers. Those are computer labs, engineering labs, and field-based labs. So let's talk about each one of these. So computer labs are exactly what they sound like. It's a room that has a lot of computers in it for computer applications. So the safety elements to be aware of when you're in a computer lab setting are pretty some pretty much summarized as shock hazards, spill hazards, and trip hazards. Now, these are not the only safety concerns that you may have to deal with in a computer lab setting, but these are the three most common safety elements you need to be aware of. So a spill hazard is exactly what it sounds like. It it is a hazard that could develop due to spilling something on or near the computer or where the computer is plugged into the wall. So to avoid spill hazards, you don't need to be eating or drinking anything in a computer lab, especially near the computers. So avoid spill hazards by just not eating and drinking in the computer labs. Now, if you can avoid a spill hazard, you are also gonna be avoiding a type of shock hazard. So shock hazards can occur when you spill a liquid on a computer and then you touch it and it could shock you. Shock hazards could also develop by sticking something into the computer that doesn't belong. So to avoid shock hazards, avoid spilling things on them and avoid sticking things in the computers that don't belong. And then trip hazards can occur whenever your computer lab maybe has some extra wiring around on the floor. So you just need to watch where you're walking. Again, these are the three common types of hazards to be aware of in a computer lab, but they are not necessarily the only ones. For more details, talk to your own specific safety uh, officer, lab technician, or uh, instructor. Let's talk about engineering labs. Now, engineering labs are typically indoor, and uh, they could present a lot of elements to safety that you need to be aware of when you are utilizing or working in these settings. So the first is fire safety. Um, and to best uh, be mindful of fire safety, you need to be able to locate your uh, fire extinguisher and your fire alarm in the room itself. Fire safety could also uh, be a concern in a computer lab as well. So you need to be mindful again where the fire extinguisher is and where the fire alarm is. Next, you need to be aware of where your first aid kit is located in your engineering laboratory. Some engineering labs have multiple first aid kits. So you need to know where it is and how to get to it in the event of a minor emergency or a minor abrasion cut, any, any minor issue uh, that you could um, encounter, know where that first aid kit is and know how to get to it. In the event of an emergency, a more critical injury, you need to call 911. Um, you need to know where your eye wash station is. So a lot of laboratories have eye wash stations in case you get dust or debris in your eyes, you need to uh, flush out your eyes. You need to be aware of your safety data sheets. If you're in a laboratory setting where you're dealing with materials that could be harmful if they get on your skin or in your system, um, chances are that lab is gonna have some type of binder or packet that has a set of safety data sheets for the materials or the chemicals that that are uh, housed in that lab. So be aware of where that is in your given laboratory. Um, you need to be mindful of safety signage. A lot of our engineering labs have signs posted around the room that indicate safety hazards or um, safety elements involved with a particular experiment or a particular piece of equipment. So be mindful and read those safety signs that are posted in your laboratory. 
foot protection. Most engineering labs um, are set up in such a way you really don't need to be in there with open toed shoes. You really need to be wearing closed toed shoes, preferably steel toed boots. So always be mindful of foot protection protocol in your engineering labs. Eye and ear protection. So general eye protection could take the form of safety glasses or safety goggles. Ear protection could take the form of earplugs or ear muffs. Depending on your experiment or uh, your procedure that you're doing in that lab, you may need to be wearing eye and ear protection uh, for, for your protection of your eyes or um, you know something is generating a loud noise, you wanna protect your hearing uh, capabilities, your ears. So um, again, be mindful of that. And then you also need to be mindful of any hot elements. So a lot of our laboratories in engineering deal with elements that can increase in temperature. Um, we could also deal with things that decrease in temperature as well. So you could argue um, cold elements is, is important as well to be mindful of. In either case, whether it's hot or cold elements, be aware of them. And then you need to wear proper clothing if that's in the form of heat or cold resistant gloves or other type of cold uh, other type of uh, clothing that will um, prevent you and your skin from getting too hot or too cold be mindful of that and again this is meant to be an overview of what you generally need to watch out for for your specific experimentation specific class or lab um, or if you're dealing with a specific piece of machinery, you will likely have to deal with more specific safety concerns. And for those, you need to talk to your lab instructor, your professor, your lab technician, or a safety officer. So field-based labs are fields in engineering, or are labs in engineering that we typically um, uh, are involved with outdoor activity. So um, in addition to some of the same elements that we see in the indoor engineering labs, you also want to be mindful of adequate visibility and head protection. Here you see we also have listed foot protection as well as ear and eye protection. Uh, again, you know, uh, we're going to echo some of the same elements from the indoor labs. But in addition, when you're outdoors, especially if you're um, outdoor in a setting where there's a lot going on, maybe there's a real construction project going on nearby or there's traffic or cars driving by you need to have adequate visibility that's going to take the form of some type of reflective vest you also need to possibly have head protection if you're in a setting where something could fall and hit you on the head or you're in a setting where you have to crawl or duck underneath things you want to protect your your head um, so let's go through some of these elements more specifically fire safety like we said you want to be mindful of your fire alarm and your fire extinguisher in your laboratory setting first aid kit locate your first aid kit when you first walk into your lab every time know where that first aid kit is in case you need to get to it eye wash station an eye wash station could be uh, more of a simple station where you have a bottle of water to squirt in your eyes or it could be an apparatus that's on the table somewhere or it could be a full-blown shower uh, with an eye wash station built into it either way locate the eye wash station and know how to get to it quickly in the event you or someone you're with gets debris or something in their eyes Safety data sheets. Um, these are historically called material safety data sheets. These again are the safety data um, and information involved with chemicals or materials uh, in a particular lab setting. Know where this is and if you're dealing with a particular chemical or material that could be hazardous, you need to refer to the safety data sheet and read about that hazard. So then you can take proper safety measures before you handle that particular material or chemical. Safety signage, be aware of signs posted in your lab setting. A lot of equipment pieces and experiments have their own specific safety concerns, and oftentimes we post signs near that piece of equipment telling people to be careful or be mindful of this particular safety hazard or concern. So always pay attention to safety signs and what pieces of equipment or experiment they are affiliated with. Foot protection, this is some uh, photo of examples of closed toed shoes and steel toed boots. You want to uh, always have proper foot protection in the form of closed toed shoes in a lab setting. Eye and ear protection, this is a photo of safety glasses and ear plugs, but you may also need um, safety goggles and ear muffs as well. So it depends on the experiment, it depends on the class, it depends on the setting. Again, for those specifics, you need to talk to the person in charge of that particular lab setting or experiment. 
hot elements. If you are going to have to deal with moving around hot elements or cold elements, you need to have proper protection in the form of gloves or other clothing to protect your skin from either getting too hot or too cold. Again, for the particular lab setting and experiment, talk to the person in charge to see um, what the need or the requirement is. Adequate visibility and head protection. Here we have a, a photo of um, a reflective vest and a hard hat. This would be more commonly needed if you were in an outdoor field based laboratory. And then in conclusion, when in doubt, stop what you are doing and ask someone for help. If you don't know what you are doing or you are questioning something, just calmly stop whatever you're doing and ask your laboratory safety officer ask uh, your lab technician or your instructor, or in some cases you may need to notify campus police, but when in doubt, don't just keep working. Stop what you're doing calmly and ask someone before moving forward. And last and certainly not least, in the event of an emergency, Stop what you're doing, be calm, and call 911. 911 should be the first call you make in the event of an emergency. After you call 911 and help is on the way, then later on you can call other people. Now, the reason why this is of the utmost importance is because your health, safety, and well being in engineering labs are of the utmost importance to you your family, your friends, your loved ones, and your professors. Everyone wants you to be safe when you are in an engineering lab setting. And in order to do that, you have to follow these uh, safety elements. You have to be mindful of safety elements, and you especially need to follow the specific safety protocols and procedures that your lab setting and your authority figure has put into place. So, um, and in the event of emergency, stop what you're doing, call 911, okay? So again, this video is meant to be an introduction to general laboratory safety elements to be mindful of when you're in an engineering lab setting. This is meant for engineering students. This is not meant to be an all inclusive detailed safety video for detailed safety elements and videos and protocols procedures. You need to talk with your safety officer, your lab technician, your instructor or professor or possibly campus police to get those particular details uh, that are unique to you and your lab setting and uh, your experiment. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe.